Okay, so my name is uh, Paul Drake. I'm going to speak about my best debugging tip. So we already seen two debugging related talks. So uh, there'll be some repetition. This is my best debugging tip. <laughs> Avoid it. But if you can't, do the best of the situation. So my motivation for this is uh, related to aviation safety which aims at as few people as possible will get killed in airplane accidents. So how do you do that? Uh, well, first you try to avoid the accident in the first place, so it never happens. And if it happens, as few people as possible should get hurt. So, uh, and each time something happens, you learn from it and change the rules and practices and improve. So we should apply the same mentality to debugging. That's my opinion. So we'll split this in be, uh, before. What can we do from preventing bugs in the first place? So we don't have to debug. Uh, during debugging, how are we as efficient as possible so we find the bug fast? And after debugging, how do we improve so we don't get bitten by the same bug or other bugs? So before, it's all about maintaining high quality. So to do that, there's a lot of stuff you need to know. So here's a good start. Uh, in case you haven't read this already, this is CPP Best Practices. Uh, it's a website or a web book. I don't know what the term is. It's mainly written by Jason Turner, co-host of uh, CPP Cast. It's quite short, so I recommend just reading it through and uh, it's updated regularly. There's a lot of stuff you need to know um, and it's important that you, even if you don't know it in detail, you must have heard of it so you know that there's something you don't know. So you know where to start digging. So undefined behavior and race conditions. Race conditions is a special case of undefined behavior. Uh, if you don't know what undefined behavior is or why it's bad, uh, you need to learn. Uh, so if you ever had a bug in release builds but not in the bug builds, it might be because the, you have undefined behavior and the optimizer has taken advantage of it and modified your code, which is uh, okay uh, according to the standard. You are the one doing something wrong. So the one definition rule as well, let you know. So you have some tools at your hand to keep this quality. Uh, compiler warnings. I still see projects who don't use uh, compiler warnings. Uh, and those are like the first line of defense. They are your friend. So if you have compiler warnings, turn uh, cranking them up to the highest level you can tolerate. And uh, uh, compilers get new warnings, so try to uh, look once in a while to see if there have been any new which you could enable. Static analysis, that's the ne next uh, level of compiler warnings. Um, uh, there's a lot of good alternatives. There's CPP check, the author of which is member of this group. Um, <coughs> there is uh, assert. I like assert because when you debug something, it's a sign that you are not as clever as you think. <laughs> so if you are sure that something uh, should be true or some condition should hold, then assert it. And then you'll find out if you're clever or not. Uh, uh, there will soon be contracts in C++ 20, I think. Uh, and uh, this will be like assert on steroids. <coughs> so I look forward to that. This is address sanitizer. Uh, it has caught an error here in my code. Uh, it's an incredibly useful tool. If you haven't tried it, please try it. Uh, it finds several memory errors. Uh, there's also undefined behavior sanitizer, thread sanitizer, and I think memory sanitizer. So I recommend taking them for a spin. This is Valgrind, another favorite of mine. Um, it doesn't instrument your code, it just runs it. But it runs it in some kind of virtual machine or like emulator or something. And it checks, uh, finds some memory errors. So this makes your code much slower. 
but it finds in this case I think it's an um, invalid read of size one says so there's some memory error in my program uh, debug iterators all major uh, vendors of STL have this uh, iterator mo debug mode so if you enable it you'll find uh, errors if you for instance step an iterator past the end or if you mix two iterators from two different containers into uh, a range this is incredibly useful uh, so I encourage you to widen your world if you work on a single platform project try making it pl uh, cross-platform and if you can't maybe you can make parts of it cross-platform because that means that you can use the best tools from each platform on your code also if you can build with multiple compilers that's very good because they have different warnings different interpretations of the standard etc so you also need to practice and prepare so I re really recommend setting up your project for debugging from the day one uh, otherwise you might be tempted to start printf debugging once you need to I recommend you try some other tools we are already seeing demonstrations of Visual Studio and Embarcado Rad Studio huh? uh, and GDB so if you have never tried them uh, go try them Perhaps you should add also that you, you, you need a serious code review and design review before. Yeah. Uh, it involves uh, other people seeing your code, reviewing your code. That will also uh, prevent... Uh, of course. So, uh, so the comment is about uh, code review. I'm all for it. So during the bugging, uh, the task is to be as efficient as possible because this can take a long time. <coughs> so uh, I recommend that you know your primary tool, get to know the keyboard shortcuts, get to know how you uh, use it. So spend half an hour, one hour looking at some tutorial or whatever so you get good at it. So this is Visual Studio. And, uh, uh, Kunal showed us earlier how to shoot, show, uh, move the instruction pointers. You see the, there's a tiny yellow arrow here. And um, <coughs> you can drag it up to set the execution point, right like this. So I'm going to add to this. Uh, if you're having a problem, uh, program with a complicated state, or it takes a while for you to get into the relevant part, this is really handy because you can like replay the last thing or maybe you have an input file or some uh, interactive thing so you can like uh, be at the place you want to be all the time instead of have waiting to start everything from the beginning so another tip is you see it says set thread name so up here in the debugging session it says main thread so if you have uh, now the thread is called banana so this is incredibly useful if you have multiple threads and you have to switch where, where am I now in the debugger? Which thread am I looking at? So uh, to start debugging, I think you should first do the easy things. Rebuild with the sanitizers, try the debug build, try release build, try with wild guy, and this is pretty fast usually. So this will give you a clue what to look for. So before you start debugging. <coughs> Once you find it, uh, prove the bug with a test. So you know that you can trigger it. Once you do that, uh, you commit the failing test, you fix the bug, and the test now passes. And this means that you prove to your teammates and the reviewer that you understood the bug, that you have fixed it, and it will never appear again. At least not in this trade. So afterwards, it's all about feedback and learning. So you should ask yourself, this bug, could, could this be you? Could we have avoided this if we did something differently? So could we have changed our procedures? Maybe you should have more extensive code review 
maybe we should require test builds uh, on 32-bit and 64-bit platforms. Do we need any changes in testing? Perhaps uh, running the unit test through Valgrind nightly? Do we need to change something in our coding guidelines? Not using raw pointers, for instance? <coughs> Maybe we should introduce other tools. Static analysis, um, whatnot. And start sharing the knowledge. Discuss with your colleagues. Say, hey, I sat with this and I learned this uh, neat trick. This would prevent this class of errors. And hear what they say. Maybe they can uh, teach you something. Maybe you can learn them something. So I just wish you good luck. And here's a list of links with stuff I talked about in this code. Oh, thank you.